Welcome to the Pasha Perspective, a place where I share my perspective on everything in the space between life and death. I'm your host, Pasha. Well, my Pachos Chachos, you wouldn't believe it, but at the beginning of this week, I'm listening to Matt Walsh from the Daily Wire read aloud the Jaffe Memo. Now, if you've never heard about the Jaffe Memo, don't feel bad, neither did I, but it was written in 1967 by Frederick Jaffe, who is a co-founder of Planned Parenthood. In response to a question of how can we control the country's population, because, of course, corrupt politicians and rich people in power want fewer people to have to rule over, it's easier that way. Like a teacher would prefer 10 students in the class than 30 students because the classroom management becomes a lot easier to control, to corral in, to build rapports and relationships. It's easier to do that with 10 people than it is to do with 30. And so why wouldn't corrupt politicians want fewer people on the earth? So in response to that, Mr. Jaffe provided a chart with some ideas that I think you would find very interesting Because as I was watching, or listening to it rather, because I was washing the dishes, uh, my mouth just dropped open. I could not believe what I was listening to, even to the point where I took off my AirPods and let the phone play so it was nice and loud for my wife to hear because... It's crazy. So again, Jaffe, J-A-F-F-E. I'll put a link in the notes uh, so that you can find a copy. I've already downloaded it to my computer. Uh, I'm sure now that people are talking about it, they're going to be burying it as soon as they can. Um, But anyway, this is the response to how can we control the population. And so the graphic is titled, Proposed Measures to Reduce Fertility by universality or selectivity of impact in the United States. The first column, because it's divided into four columns, uh, says universal impact, and below that, the subtitle, social constraints. The first thing mentioned in the graphic is to restructure the family. Man, it sounds so familiar. Postpone or avoid marriage which sounds like the most recent generation that we are raising, doesn't it? They are the least likely to get married, which also means the least like less divorces as well, but less marriages, I think, is the more important thing to focus on, uh, or to avoid marriage at all. And it just so happens that this ridiculous trend of the dinks, dual income, no kids, Uh, are promoting that lifestyle, that if you avoid um, having children, which, you know, again, that choice, even if you get married, having that that conscious choice that you're never going to have kids because you'd rather buy material things because apparently that's all you are is just a vessel that needs to be gratified and satisfied all day long instead of a soul that has purpose and meaning connectivity to the world, but I digress. The second bullet point under restructure the family, alter image of ideal family size, to which, thank you, Mr. Walsh, he did the work for me. In the 60s, the average amount of children per family was four. In the 80s, which my family represents as well, it shrunk to two. And if you've been keeping up with the podcast since last year, the average amount of children born on average again, so there are decimals, is 1.8. And we've stated as in other podcasts before that a country needs something like 2.1 or 2.2 children per family uh, for the younger generations to replace the old, those who retire, those who pass away. Um, And so it's incredible that it's, it's actually already happening this little plan from, you know, what is it, 60, 70 years ago. The next bullet point under social constraints is compulsory education of children. Isn't that funny? 
that maybe setting a law that your children has to go to school was all done on purpose, not to truly educate, because I don't think that's what is happening based on the videos that I've seen on social media, uh, but more of an indoctrination camp. And then you tie that along with the encouraging women to work, which is also under social constraints, and you start to realize that maybe the reason society is pushing this feminist idea that women should leave the house and to shame and disrespect the at-home mom is to steal the children away from them sooner. If you got to go to work, what are you going to do? You're going to look for a daycare center, which is going to cost money. And isn't it funny that until like pre-K or something, you have to pay twice as much, but then the government will help you later. You know, and yet we have $113 billion going to Ukraine for their welfare system, for them to build a wall, to give them a retirement system, all on our American tax dollars. I wonder if maybe then we wouldn't have to push our kids out of our arms, out of the nest, into some stranger's, some lunatic swallowing the alphabet soup to indoctrinate our children into believing that men can breastfeed or that women can have penises. It's absolutely absurd. But again, what an easy way. And then you can also instill in them that value that why would you have kids? Why not live a gluttonous materialistic life? Reward yourself for being somebody's wage slave. You know, celebrate the fact that you're making some rich person even richer because you're out in the workforce. I think we have more purpose and meaning than that. But I digress. It also reminds me of something I heard about John Rockefeller or J.D. Rockefeller, which the J may stand for John. Right now I'm drawing a blank and I'm not going to Google it because you know me, pachos, chachos, I like to shoot from the hip. But uh, Rockefeller was quoted once as saying that the problem with our country is that only half the population is paying taxes because women were staying at home and only the men were going out, earning the bacon, and bringing it home. And so I think that motivated the idea to push this feminist idea that it's more empowering, you know, as a manipulation, as double speak, to convince women to leave the home. And now they're working, making some rich person richer, and they're paying taxes. So the government can take more money and spend it on more causes, which again, make the grafter politicians even richer than before. Also underneath universal impact uh, is to encourage, encourage increased homosexuality. You know, I stress the word encourage because it kind of sounds like they're not convinced that people are born gay. It kind of seems to me that you can encourage or manipulate or overtly persuade people into believing that you know, maybe your sensitivity, your kind of feminist side should just go all the way and be some older guy's perversion puppet. It's very interesting in the 67 that they would say that you could encourage as if they knew something. And you look at Disney and you wonder, why is it in TV? Why is it in movies? Why is it in books? Half of the Florida Teen Reads recommended list is with girls and their girlfriends. And you know what? If everybody is gay, like Bill Maher once joked about, then that's the end of our species. Because if nobody is having kids, and again, look at Plugs and Sockets episode, two plugs together can't make electricity, two sockets together can't make electricity, you need a plug and a socket to make electricity, electricity, of course, meaning new life, being used the way you're supposed to be used, the way our father created you, it's very interesting, but what a great way to control the population then, right? Get them all in the alphabet soup and then everybody's sterile or might as well be. The next social constraint is to educate for family limitation, right? And so again, normalize the divorced family, normalize the taking of welfare because you're by yourself and instead of relying on your spouse, what, what are you expected to do? You have to rely on the government, which gives them your vote, which gives them more power. 
The next one I thought was very interesting too, you know, considering seed oils and soy milk, fertility control agents in water supply. I think I have an episode called Shooting Blanks where the amount of sperm that men produce now has dropped 30% over the last something like 10 or 20 years. So even if you want to have kids because of the processed foods that you're eating and the the artificial milks that you're drinking, you have less of a chance of making it happen because you have a lesser amount of sperm, i.e. you are controlling the population. I'm going to stick and I'm going to skip the economic deterrence incentives column under the title Selective Impact Depending on Socioeconomic Status. Uh, but there are some interesting ideas there, like reducing maternity leave. I don't think most companies have maternity leave anymore. You can go, but it's not paid. And so it's to reduce or eliminate paid maternity leave, like it says on this graphic. Uh, reduce children's or family's allowance. You know, I remember getting tax breaks from Trump for having kids, and then Biden took all those things away. Uh, pensions for women of 45 with less than X amount of children, which I thought it was interesting, especially with all the TikTok videos of 45-year-old women complaining that modern feminism led them astray, and now they're lonely, and now they feel like they've ruined their purpose, and now they have no legacy, and now there's going to be nobody to hold their hand when they meet death. Interesting. The last one, though, that I want to do bring up, that I do want to bring up from that as well, is chronic depression. You know, maybe social media and all of this is used to create a depressed society that is too depressed to find value in himself, too depressed to ask a girl out, too depressed to get married, too depressed to have children. I wonder, could this be the summative result of all of these plans from the six, from 67 and Planned Parenthood? you know, which does its part as well, right? Over the last 50 years, 15 million children dead. That certainly controlled the population. I think I read somewhere recently that 30,000 babies were estimated to be saved because of the ending of Roe versus Wade. So, I mean, that's certainly a positive. The next under selective impact, depending on socioeconomic status column, is subtitled Social Controls. Uh, And so here they have compulsory abortion of -of out-of-wedlock pregnancies. Kind of reminds me of China. Compulsory sterilization of all who have two children, except for a few who would be allowed three. I wonder if they got that idea from China. Although, I mean, not sterilization, but you financially penalize, physically, brutally penalize. That's certainly a compulsory motivational tool. The next one, confine childbearing to only a limited number of adults. Uh, Again, controlling the population. Stock certificate type permits for children. Like China, if you want to have two kids, you have to ask the government's permission first. (laughs) Uh, I laugh because if you don't, you have to cry, right? The last column is titled Measures Predicated on Existing Motivation to Prevent Unwanted Pregnancy. Good Lord, that's a mouthful. But again, reduce the country's population so that we are easy to control. The more of us standing against them, the less likely they'll get away with what they want. If they can reduce the number and use their fear-mongering to control us and give up all our freedoms for the false idea of security, I mean, it makes sense to me. So here's what they say. Payments to encourage sterilization. Payments to encourage contraception. Payments to encourage abortion. It kind of reminds me of how our tax dollars pay for our military to have abortions. Like, one, I don't understand why they would be getting pregnant in the first place. And what does our tax dollars have to do with murdering our own babies when, again, we don't have enough children to replace the older generations? But again, I don't think that's without purpose. I think that is absolutely unplanned. It's not a coincidence. It is manipulation. It has been guided by the swamp for so many years that these things are now coming true. The next one, abortion and sterilization on demand. Hmm, isn't there like a plan B that you can order online and get in the mail? 
That's interesting. Allow harmless contraceptives to be dis- be distributed non medically. So you could, um, I don't know, go online and order a pill. Good Lord in heaven. Improve contraceptive technology. I saw a commercial on Hulu where now they put it under the skin in your arm. And even in the commercial, it says, if you or your doctor can't feel it under the skin of your arm, go to the hospital immediately. (laughs) Are you kidding me? Like, I'm sure it's microchip, GPS, maybe recording device. Who knows? Maybe it'll be a Manchurian candidate device and control everything. Maybe it'll sterilize you. Maybe it'll kill you. Who knows? I mean, I guess all of those things, the government wouldn't really care because that's exactly what they're looking for anyway. One less person in the world. Isn't that why Canada, their number six killer was government-assisted suicide? Number six. And they want to make it for even younger kids to be able to consent for government murder, essentially. I mean, imagine a teenager who feels depressed, who had a girlfriend and she dumped him, ripped his heart out of his chest, ate it, shat it out, and fed it to him. And he's depressed, might want to think, you know, maybe I don't want to live anymore. And the government's going to be like, yeah, okay. No problem, eh? Don't worry about it, wanker. Or hoser. There it is, hoser. (laughs) But you see what I'm saying? That's... Crazy, and they want to bring that to the United States. No thank you, I say, and I, if you're listening to me, Pachas Chachas, I know you are in the same vein. The last two things, and then we'll call it for the day, make contraceptive truly available and accessible. Reminds me of the huge bowl at the nursing building at the University of Central Florida filled with multiple colors of condoms and, you know, magnum sizes and things like that that some men uh, may need. And then the last one here is to improve maternal health care with family planning, a core element. And, you know, that we can just cross out because we know they were, they said, screw that. <laughs> we're not going to do that. But everything else, I mean, there is a chart from 1967, the Jaffe memo. If you just Google Jaffe memo, you'll find it. But like I said, I'm going to put it in the footnote. So I hope your eyes are open. My eyes are open. This is crazy. We need to drain the swamp. MAGA, baby. MAGA. And with that, I say to you, thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. As always, God bless.